Hello everyone, welcome again. Let's have a little bit of a reading. And I've got a visitor with us today, so try to stay tuned, <laughs> try not to get too distracted. I'll do the best I can not to get distracted as well. Hey, cheeky I see you. I see you. I see you. You're so cute. I love you. All right, well this one, this one is one for you because I love you too. It's called Epiphany. This is taken, by the way, from a book uh, titled Metaphysic, which is a new tarot deck that I got by um, Daniel M. N. Martinez. I can't remember his direct name. It's probably written here. Daniel Martin Diaz. Sorry, my friend. Uh, I won't forget now. <laughs> All right. Moving on to a, um, a small essay that he has listed in this book here. You're going to repeat and follow me for the whole session, aren't you? All right. Good luck with that. It'll be good to distract your conscious mind so the information sets in subconsciously. Nice little trick. It's exactly why she's here. Totally planned. Yep. Have Epiphany by Daniel. Uh, by Daniel. By Octavio Paz. Uh, from his work or his piece, Louis Cernuda or Cernuda. Have you ever heard a song for the first time and felt such recognition? It seemed suddenly to be the soundtrack of your life? Or visited a museum and sensed that a work of art was also seeing you while you were seeing it? Quite unexpectedly, you feel exposed, empowered and inexplicably altered. The artist seems almost to have predicted your very existence through time and space, anticipating your arrival here in paint or graphite or clay or sounds in that sudden moment you have connected with the universal you have met another's consciousness and are a receiver of essential information delivered in that primary encounter an ethereal current has passed through your ready receptors countless micro adjustments led you unaware to be exactly there exactly then to witness that one thing, a jolt. And there you are, in the epiphanic moment. A bolt of lightning, as it is so often described. You remember the first time you saw lightning crack across a storm-filled sky or heard its confirmation in the subsequent thunder? That is the shock of every opening into the self from that flash on. A wake-up call. A fundamental shift, a pivotal moment when self aligns with potential, with the world. Eureka! After this, nothing can ever be the same again. Imagine your very cells transforming like the transmutation of one element into another by nuclear force into base metals, like base metals into gold in the alchemical alembic of the self. It seems impossible that we can be ourselves our whole lives, yet somehow not fully be so. Finding personal truth is an ongoing journey with every new connection we make, signalling to a hidden part of the self to awaken. In the tarot, two cards describe such shocks of fundamental energy. The judgment card, sometimes referred to as card of epiphany, describes the moment when one's place in the world is fully realized after much struggle to determine a purpose for living. This card is often depicted as an angel trumpeting a message from the beyond. A higher level of consciousness awaits those willing to receive it. There is also the tower, most commonly depicted as an enormous built structure, the ego perhaps, struck by lightning and crumbling to the ground, whether we were aware of the need for change or not, but chance is offered to live in greater truth to rebuild our structures, to suit that truth better than ever before. The next action is up to us. Though, it is not the action itself that matters as much as the essentialness. There is a sense, there is the sensation that not completing it would be fundamentally impossible. It is as the poet Rainer Maria Rilke so, unex so unexpectedly ended his famous poem archaic torso of Apollo with for here there is no place that does not see you you must 
change your life. The body with its thousand eyes is an intricate network of sensory and etheric channels moving through the world in constant reception. The world in turn agrees to provide infinite opportunities to collaborate. Can we, should we increase our attentions to the world? Through finer and finer attunements, we can allow not just the obvious jolts of lightning to sway us into ourselves, but the tiny moments of discovery as well. The moments that poets particularly value. <laughs> A tide of pale crocuses sprung up, washing the field in amethyst, for instance. A wisp of paper escaping from the fire's embers floating up into the blackness. The viscosity of blood beginning to coagulate as it runs from a cut of your, on your knee. The person you feel you've known forever, the moment you first shake hands. When the starry sky, a vista of open seas, or a stained glass window shedding purple beams fascinates me, there is a cluster of meaning, of colours of words, of caresses. There are light touches, sense, size, cadences that arise. Shroud me, carry me away, and sweep me beyond the things I see, hear, or think. The sublime object dissolves in the ruptures of a bottomless memory. Described Semiotosian Julia Kristeva. I hope I pronounced that correctly. A plethora of such fascinations, large and small, wait in slight vibration to jolt us with recognition, with a sense of humanness and universality. We take it all in and project back an altered version of the self. That's, uh, that's pretty wicked. Uh, you might want to go back and start that again, because not only does it touch on tarot, but it goes into some very deep places about what, it, what an epiphany is, and, and also some other things about how we have a tendency to miss the finer details of life. And this is where I found, while reading this, unusual depictions and images being given or offered to me uh, along the lines of how we usually see that biblical angel with wings all over the place, with eyes, inverted eyes, where it can move in all directions through all planes of existence, and it can see and be a part of everything, but yet is still not a part of anything at the same time. That's very analogous to our self behind our senses, right? This winged visual thing with thousands or millions of eyes, eyes being bits and pieces of sensory apparatus that can be used to detect information in the surrounding fields. So speaking about our unconscious and our subconscious, we basically we remember and learn everything. I mean, there's even things to suggest that I've got, in order for her to keep something distracted while I'm doing things like this, I have educational material playing on my TV, and I have it in the background right now. You might not be fully aware of it using your audible sensory detective devices, your ears. These might not be sensitive enough to pick up the signal, or the signal might not have enough power to make it to your ears, for your conscious mind and its awareness, but your unconscious mind is more than likely picking up the material. I can tell you definitely well mine is, because I can hear vaguely the voices in the background. So even if you're not looking at the TV, the TV is behind you, you are still knowing full well what's on that TV. The light is hitting you in the back of your body, and everywhere all over your body you have what are called photoreceptors. These detect light and inform your entire, your entire universe that we call a cellular culture about what is coming ahead of time. These then go on about making and moving massive amounts of, as they put it in this essay, as Octavia puts it, Yeah, it's somewhere there. <laughs> but what it's saying very clearly to me, can we or should we allow not just the obvious jolts of lightning to grab our attention, okay? So not just the big things in life that are going, pay attention to me. 
not to say six, not you, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Not just those things, but all the other things, you know, that little bit of smoke floating up into the air, that random thing that a friend says, just as you're imagining this other thing going on and happening, right? Or, as uh, Julia Kristeva put it very succinctly at the end here, which I'll summarize with it to finish up, when the starry sky, a vista of open seas, or a stained glass window shedding pu purple beams fascinates me, there is a cluster of meaning, of colours, of words, of caresses. There are light touches, sense, sights, sighs, ca cadences that arise, shroud me, carry me away, and sweep me beyond the things I see, hear, or think. Okay? All of these things are... are analogized in a visual explanation, okay? When the starry sky, a vista of open seas, or a stained glass window shedding purple beams, there is a cluster of meanings, a meaning within the realm of visual experience, which is light, okay? A meaning of colors, of words, yeah. these light waves and these frequencies caress and interact yeah. with us, they touch us, they add sense and size and cadences that arise between each and every one of our cells in the infinite universe that we are. Infinite meaning, as you keep going in, it keeps going, right? So you have 500 trillion cells or whatever, and then inside of those you have 500 trillion of atoms in each one, and then inside of those you have even more, and then inside of those you have even, so it keeps going infinitely, scale relatively infinitely. So. Julia sums it up really well at the end here by saying, quite simply, that for those of us who have the time and the patience to take some moments, these moments contain things that usually have more impact in finding ourself, as do the larger bolts of lightning that happen in our, in our life, you know, so while you're running about trying to organise the bills and the kids' lunch for, for school, um, that's modern day in your face kind of light stuff that's happening, but that's not facilitating any of the light that's going on behind you. So you need to have this interactive play between the front and the back of you, between your higher self and your body, between your soul and your physicality, between your conscious and your unconscious. Okay. Once you can do that, you have a method of crossing the veil. putting the uh, tuning fork on her skull. If you haven't done that, I highly suggest it. It's very orgasmic. Uh... <laughs> there you go. All right, with that, we'll call it a day. Thanks for staying and having fun. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. You wanna say bye? Okay. Say bye. There you go. Bye bye. Bye bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Mm -hmm.